Oh, it's a beautiful morning here, September 6th. Big Irma is bearing down on Florida. A lot of things have to be done, like this canvas on the top of my boat should come down. Maybe even the big tiki and the uh, bamboo up there. Of course, Mike's boat needs some attention too. His bimini has to come down. This uh, tiki hut that is going to come down, it comes down fairly easy. Mike will be coming here. We'll be hauling away the bigger stuff like the grill. The kayaks are already taken away and put into a storage place. It's kind of funny. Just set everything up. And then I just had to tear it down. Even the picnic tables. We'll have to tether those to the pylons. In case the storm surge gets so high that they just float away. Hmm. Pretty crazy. But, like I already told somebody, it's worth it. The idea that I get to live every single day by the water comes with risks, of course, but the rewards are really great. Come what may, I think I can safely say that it was worth it. Yep, no risk, no reward. Living on a boat, I knew very well what the risks were about hurricanes. You can see I have a lot of rope here for just such an occasion. I mean a lot of rope. <laughs> The plan for a hurricane usually is to take the boat somewhere into a hurricane hole. I knew of one right behind those trees over there. And I was going to take the boat around the corner and spider web it up into the trees with all that rope. I mean, off of every cleat, go way off to a mangrove tree with enough scope to allow for the tide shift. Unfortunately, the tide was being pushed out by the wind, not surging in. I knew this after years of being on a kayak. I knew we were fixing to get a really low tide. This is about as low as it usually gets compared to the dock. And still tear ass and out of here. <laughs> Makes sense. When the hurricane starts pushing out of the north, it's probably going to get really low. <laughs> Interesting. Yep, I've seen this phenomenon before plenty of times. It's interesting that I had called it before everybody else saw the water rush out of Tampa Bay. We were still going to get winds though, which is why I was taking down the tiki here. I was preparing for the bad winds, so the canvas came down too. I didn't want that getting torn up. And because the tide was so low, I wasn't going to be able to move the boat around to where I wanted to. So it was probably going to stay right here at the dock. Before I made that decision though, depending on which way the hurricane went, I took down everything that could possibly get damaged. The thatch on the tiki hut, and the tiki hut itself came down. Every bit of it. The canvas, and the poles, everything. Back inside the boat, I took everything that I didn't want to get wet, including my books. There's a couple of good ones there. And the plan was to take them and put them inside Ziploc bags in case any of the windows leaked or hatches blew open or whatever. And as far as the windows were concerned, sometimes with a strong sideways rain I can get a little leakage. So I got some duct tape and I taped the windows. I feel like it added a little bit of strength to them too, especially these big windows. You can hear how they rattle a little bit. My biggest fear of something breaking was actually the glass. Upstairs I also duct taped these little hatches. They were a little bit flimsy so the duct tape I thought would help ensure their survival and keep some water out of the upper helm. Now with all the thatch and the tiki down and the canvas down and everything taped up, it was time to tie the boat up in the middle of this slip. I got my lines as long as possible to allow for any kind of search, up or down. I used every single cleat and I tied everything down as best as I could. It was getting close to being the time to leave. Time to head inland because the uh, eye is 
It's supposed to come right above us. I hope this is all here when I get back. Some predictions had the eye going out over the gulf and staying out there, where it would stay intense for a long time. If that were the case, Tampa would get a southwest wind that would have pushed maybe 20 feet of water into the bay. That would have been really bad. Here you see I'm locking up that hatch, not for looters or anything, but to keep the wind from blowing the hatch open. It's a sickening feeling. You know, I had to walk away from the house. Now, I have to walk away from the boat. Hopefully this one I get to come back to. Here you can see the boat is centered, pulled away from the dock like it usually is. My reasoning was I was going to try to keep it off the pylons. So I had every cleat done, and I even took the anchor, and I set that. <laughs> I didn't think the boat would go anywhere, honestly. I was feeling somewhat confident. Here during the actual leaving of the property, <laughs> the first disaster strikes. Oh. Eh, during a hurricane, I guess shoes are optional. <laughs> now it was off to my friend Rich and Kathy's house, which is where the dogs were. On the way though, I decided to stop at the storage place just to drop some stuff off and to get one last look of what everything looked like before the storm. I was hoping that my unit there would look similar <laughs> when the storm was over. Okay, I'm outside uh, Ruskin Elementary. I'm about to turn right on 41. I also took some before pictures of the neighborhood, just in case. I'm hoping that uh, Shell Point Road looks the same in a few days. The guy taking sandbags here. Dave! Dave! <laughs> smart man, smart man. Still from the city. I stepped on a pop top and blew up my flip flop. Kathy and Rich here, they just bought this house. So I helped them secure it as best we could. I tested it, safe. <laughs> they babysit my dogs quite often, actually. Dogs have it pretty good, I'll tell you. I also didn't seem very concerned about the big storm that was looming very close. Something to be learned about the way dogs handle life. Anyways, next we headed east. With the storm predicted to go up the gulf, we decided to go to my friend Mike's house in Polk County. It was about an hour's drive. We figured for sure this would get us away from the eye of the storm and the most intense winds. All right. Gasoline generator, barbecue, we're all set.
Mike purchased this place about six months ago, and he just started building a little house here. Got a nice bed here. I even have a way to set my hammock up, which is pretty neat. We have a common area out here and plenty of lights. So you can see there. And this is a tiny home that Mike is in the progress of building. Those are like 2x8, 16 on center up there. Very stout little building. This eventually is going to be his bathroom. But because we need something in the interim, I just hung a light up there and some toilet paper. And I brought my composter. So we have a place to use the, uh, the potty, as it were. <laughs> Mike's actually outside putting a fascia on this building right now. But then of course we have a metal building that we can retreat to if the wind gets really, really bad. Mike had literally been working on this place all week. He just put the siding on, didn't even bother cutting out the windows. How are we doing? We were pretty much set here. We had plenty of good eats. We had a good place to shelter up in that wooden building, all of us. And we had this metal sea container. These containers are very thick, very heavy, meant to withstand the rigors of the sea. In a pinch, if things got really bad, we'd all hunker down in here. You can see the ropes there in place to hold the door shut. Those dock lines should for sure be able to hold those doors against even hurricane winds, especially considering the direction that was supposed to be coming from. All we had to do now was wait. Little did we know that the storm took an unexpected easterly turn and went inland, and it wound up coming right for us. Fortunately, most of the intensity of the storm got knocked down by the land as it inched its way up Florida. It was still windy, but not that terrible that we were all scared. You can see there was a pretty relaxed attitude as we waited. <laughs> all right, Irma. Give us a blow with, yeah. <laughs> Get it on camera. Oh boy. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh <laughs> man. It's like I can't take one more of this. Yeah, oh, it's flexing. Yeah. It's nice that the wind. That dry erase board's a champion though. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. You get them sponsored. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I bet if you got a tarp out there right now. <laughs> Ooh, right across the property. Dude, I want I want to get a tuna rod with like 100 pound test to fly a, fly a kite. Oh, that'd be... It'd be like you're, like you're fighting a sailfish. You see all those kite surfers every day coming yeah. home over the uh, Sunshine Skyway. Sounds like thunder out there. another 40, 30 minutes. Yeah, and then the eye is going to be right That's outside. Right Come on, Roof. <laughs> you can do it. Chickens are pulling at their their yeah. neckties to like... Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> At least they were smart enough to go with and bring food. Did they? Yeah, they did. They come. Mm. We've actually been blessed with this east wind. Oh, yeah. The fact that we can stand here with the door yeah, open. I know. I can the whiteboard over there didn't make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Look. Next one. It's close. I do feel bad for the whiteboard, man. It held, <laughs> it, it held up. How are you going to know what to do? There's like a list on there of things. I'm done. So yeah, I'm gonna be all just some. <laughs> no, you don't have to do anything. Once a wipe. Yeah. <laughs> the to-do list is about to fly away. <laughs> Woo -hoo! Yeah. I'm gonna have nothing to do. <laughs> yeah, it's still there. You're not out of the woods yet. You still gotta go pick up the laundry and get groceries. And <laughs>
Uh oh. She's loose. Oh boy. Yep, she's loose. Oh gosh. Oh dear. Yeah, that first section is, yeah. uh, it's got a little dent in it. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, oh! Hold oh, on, little roof, hold on! Oh, oh man. Oh, yeah, it's about to fly away. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, our <laughs> Oh, goodness. Wow. Dude, that thing's. Yep, just about. Yeah. Well, it got wedged in there pretty good. Oh, that's a good breeze. And it stays. It gets thunder and it's gone. <laughs> yep. Hey! Oh. It's bending with the wind now, so yeah. It's, yeah. it's actually better, I think, <laughs> until the next big gust comes. Oh, boy. That's a good gust. But technically, you owe me half an almond joy. <laughs> We're betting chocolate as to whether or not the, the roof will be there. Don't give up your chocolate yet, Kathy. Is it really just half off? It is half off. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, no, that's like an eighth. An eighth. So the whiteboard's still there, so you still have a chore list. We still hear frogs outside. Oh man. What? What? <laughs> That's gonna be something when the wind shifts after the eye passes. Yeah. So I might need to move my truck. I do need to move my truck. I believe you do. Yeah. Put it down here on the end because mm -hmm. if that all shifts, it's gonna come back this way. Yep. That is one stout. Oh, there goes the whiteboard. Uh, this is oh like man. Music. Yep. Oh. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, it's gone. Now it's like it's like a white paper now. <laughs> Hold on, little magnets. Help is on the way. Oh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nope. nope. Yeah, nope. With what they're saying, with what they're telling them. That's us, blue dot. And that's <laughs> the remnants of Irma. Coming right towards us. There it goes. Ah, oh, I just took out the. Oh, there you go. Look out, mother. Wow. Ooh, that was lightning. Or no, that was probably a, a transformer uh, thing going. We're in the eye, we're in the edge of the eye wall now. Yep. Pretty good. It's all coming apart. Hmm. We're in the eye, the door's open. <laughs> Ain't that amazing? I don't like what we say in tornado situations, Diane. Yeah, interior of the house, away yeah. from the windows right now until this. Away from the I what? mean, this is the band that's very the close to the center. So that's <laughs> We're at the front door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Worst part of the eye, the north east side, right of the eye, which is usually the worst, is probably on us now. Doesn't sound any worse. Maybe it's not here yet. There is no defined eye anymore. Right. It's so strange how there's no rain behind it. I know, it's really weird. Ooh.
Yeah. And the walls are moving. A little bit of rain coming through here. Yeah. Oh, that's coming. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know it's probably coming over that lip, that piece I put up. Mm -hmm. I had caught that lip. I'm glad you put it there. Yeah. I, yeah. And we just surely got. We literally just had enough time to it. So. I mean, literally worked out to the Yep. <laughs> Got out here. Okay. What are we dogs outside? How are we doing? Hey, stay close. Be a roof on that and this. this stuff right here. How are we guys doing? Everybody's all right? Dogs are okay? We're about to go uh, back home. It's 
about an hour drive back home. I got my friends with me. They both have cars. I'm just gonna watch for debris on the way home and down power lines and everything. I think we uh, fared pretty well though. Even though the eye came over us, it was all beat up from traveling over land. And it didn't go out to sea, so, and stay intensified and cause a surge for Tampa. We all kind of um, were spared quite a bit. We had been listening on the radio before we left uh, and hearing that in certain areas, cleanup crews wanted people to stay off these roads and to give them a chance to clear everything. But in our area, we were getting the indications that we were good to go. You could see that there was a tree down back there, and this intersection we came to had no power. Everybody was being pretty civil, treating it like a stop sign. And really there wasn't that much damage. Well, like that big sign right there got some damage. But the only thing that was really beat up, not so much road signs, but the trees, Tree. Freaking tree, he's drunk. <laughs> there were signs of tree carnage everywhere. Looks like we got a couple trees that were just taken down right here. Looks like they're still taking trees down. All over the place. community really seems to come together, uh, both professional and just regular people, to take care of the roads in situations like this. It's pretty nice. We are coming up on my storage facility. Let's see what kind of shape that's in. However, the further west we get, the less destruction I see. There's my storage place right there. It looks intact. I don't see anything tore up over there. Sweet. I had figured that was going to be a pretty anxious moment if the hurricane had torn my storage place to pieces. I already don't have much stuff as it is. Coming back to US 41. Means I'm really close to home. I see a roof tore up over there. So we obviously had some winds. Something major over here. I'm sure, that made a lot of noise when it came down. Ah, oh, the doghouse made it. Cool. Very cool. Let's we'll see what Shell Point looks like. First casualty of fence. Nothing really else to speak of. That's good. A lot of palm fronds down. Palm fronds down. Palm fronds down. A little bit of water in the streets, but considering the rain. This last mile coming up to my property here, I had had nightmares about it the previous couple of days, wondering what I would see when I finally got back to where my boat is. Oh, 
box. This is like unofficial announcement of my address, I guess. No checks? No? Alright. No money! And this is a time that would leave a pit in your stomach, you know, after a hurricane when you're returning to home. However, this time I really was very well prepared. My boat's got water, and fuel, electricity, everything that I need to be comfortable is there for me, even without power. Uh -oh. And that pretty much right there is the only damage the entire property suffered, except up by the fence. But Everything looked good. Still there, still floating. The anti Irma gate seems to have worked. Oof, what's all this? Boat seems to have uh, put a little damage into the pylons. Pylon survived it though. She did good. She did real good. <laughs> Tables are still here. Good. That's some strong stuff, that thatch. Beautiful. Well, there was no time to relax. Shortly after we got back, Richie and I tended to Mike's boat, pushed him off the pylons and reset his fenders. Our next task was to get onto my boat. We had a strong southwesterly wind. You can see the way the clouds are going there. And it was pushing the boat away from the dock. And the other lines were preventing it from getting close to me, so... When in doubt, kayak. I had a little Catch 100 with me that fit the bill. It's a little windier than normal as far as the conditions I like to go kayaking in. At least I didn't have very far to go. I removed a couple of the lines, I shortened a whole bunch of others, and I got the boat back to where it normally sits, next to the dock. Next task was to open it up and make sure everything inside was perfect. Which it was. It even had power still. It's all still here. Life goes on.
The rest of the property went back together pretty easy. Everything is built to be mobile, including the flagpole. Kind of felt good to hoist the colors of the country. And then we set about our other tasks. Picnic tables got righted and put back in place. This tent got erected by my friend Richie and myself. It's pretty neat how a big tent can be put up by just two people. And then I put my little touches back on it. This thatch is held up with zip ties. It can come up and down very easy. It's more like it. Plus we started on a few new things, like these Adirondack chairs. My buddy helped me with the painting of those as well. Sure is nice to have a cool place to sit. And in the very end, it was time to do what I love best again. I must say, things here at Zoffinger's improved very quickly. No doubt, things are even going to get better and better. Just watch them.